Hello, my name is Maria Yakovu, and I'm the Director of Postgraduate Education in the Department of Sociology. I'll be spending the next few minutes telling you about our PhD program. We admit about 20 students per year to our program. And I think that's a really good size. It's big enough to have a real buzz about it, but it's also small enough that our students are very well integrated into the department and they get to know each other really well. So many of our students remain friends and they, may, they remain professional collaborators for years and years after they finish their PhDs. If you look on our website, you'll see that research in the department is organized into three broad clusters. So there's theory and culture, there's politics and inequality, and there's science and technology. But actually that masks the fact, you know, those three broad clusters mask the fact that our postgraduate students are doing research literally in a huge range of areas. So here's just a few examples of what our PhD students do. We've got several PhD students who are working in the area of social theory. Um, many of our students are working in the area of social movements, particularly um, the link between social movements and nationalism. We have a number of students working in the area of gender, for example, the gender division of housework, violence against women or the prevention of violence against women. Um, we have some students researching in the area of public health. So we have a lot of students working on um, the use of assisted reproductive technologies. Um, we have a student, for example, working on maternity services for premature babies in Kenya. Um, we have students working, a number of students actually working on new media technologies and the politics of um, new media technologies. We have students working in the area of race and ethnicity, black motherhood, indigenous land rights, you know, so you can see that the area is, um, the areas that we cover are really, really broad. So, apart from the fact that our student body is very diverse. And you know, it's not just diverse in terms of the um, subjects that people are researching, but our students come with a really diverse range of disciplinary backgrounds. They come um, with a very diverse range of experiences and employment backgrounds, and they come from right across the world. So, you know, there's diversity everywhere. But apart from that, what is it that sets our PhD programme apart from some others? And I would say there's two things. Um, first of all, research, I think research right across our department is characterised by a very close relationship between um, very solid and rigorous theoretical foundations on the one hand, and then interesting and innovative empirical work on the other. So you've got this interplay constantly between the theory and the data. That's the first thing. The second thing which characterizes our department is what you might call a tradition of the scholar activist. The idea that you don't just study something, you don't just kind of contribute to learning and knowledge in that area and leave it at that, but you also care a lot about the issues that you're researching and you contribute in a very practical way as well. So many of our students come to us with a history of activism, uh, political, social, environmental activism. Some have worked in NGOs, some have worked as journalists. So of course you absolutely can come here to do a PhD if you haven't done any of these things, if you aren't an activist. But when you come, you will find a department where research is, is sort of holding hands, if you like, with practice, with activism, and with a commitment to issues of social justice. So what do our students do when they come to do a PhD? You know, you come to do a PhD, what do you actually do? Well, it's very, very individualized. In the first year of study, nearly all of our students take some taught courses, but those courses will be different for every single student. 
So most students do some courses in research methods. Um, a lot of students sit in on master's level courses, either in our own department or in another department in Cambridge. Um, some students need to improve their English language. Some students work on their academic writing skills. Um, and there's also a lot on offer in Cambridge to help you along with other things relating to an academic career. Um, for example, there are courses to help you with writing applications for research funding, for example, or courses to help you um, prepare papers to submit to peer reviewed journals. There's lots on offer. Um, in your first year as well, obviously, everybody has to read a lot, you'll be reading a lot. Um, and most students spend quite a bit of time sort of refining their research proposal. So, you know, even if you come along with what seems to be a pretty much perfect research proposal and one that you really want to do, I haven't yet met a single student who didn't change their proposal a little bit, who didn't find a way to make it better. Now, 99% of the time, um, students find that they come with a very big research proposal and then in some way they make it a little bit smaller. So it's completely normal to come along with a proposal to research the general theory of everything in your chosen area and actually to sort of finish your first year with a much better idea of what will be feasible to do in the three or four years that you spend on your PhD. So those are some things that you might do in your first year. In the second year, not all of our students are away on field work, but most of our students are away from the department doing field work in different locations around the world. Now, obviously, at the moment, things are not normal. They are very far from normal. Um, and many students who had planned to go away for field work have found that it's been difficult to do so that, you know, in some cases they have had to make adjustments and in other cases they haven't been able to go at all. Um, so many of our students are having to find ways of contacting their respondents and conducting interviews remotely. Um, we're giving as much support as we can and although it's difficult having to rethink things in this way, it's also a great learning opportunity to investigate different ways, different and new ways of doing things. Now, by the time you guys um, are in your second year, I'm assuming, I'm hoping that things will be a little bit more back to normal than they are, a little bit more normal than they are now. But whatever happens, um, we will try to support you in the exercise of data collection, whether that means you sort of go somewhere to collect your data in the traditional way or whether you end up doing it remotely. So that's the second year. In the third year, most of the students are back in the department again, um, analyzing their data and starting to write it up, starting to sort of generate papers or you know, their thesis. Now, some students finish their PhDs after three years of study, and some students, probably most students, need some additional time, and you can have another year on top of that, which we call the writing up year. And in that final one or two years, when you are writing up your thesis, you're finishing up, we'll also be supporting you with a series of seminars um, to help you as you make your way from being a student into the job market. So this has been a very brief overview of our PhD, but I hope it's been helpful in some way. Um, if you're interested in applying, please do look at our website. You'll find lots of information about the research in the department. You'll find information about what our PhD students are doing. And you'll also find information um, on how to apply to do a PhD here. So thank you very much for watching and maybe I'll see some of you next year.